All right, so here we are in game taking a look at people's initial buys. Hello, everyone. It's White and Nerdy, bringing you a cast of a game for a friend from mid high plat, plat two, plat three, Elo. I was promised a super exciting game with a lot going on. I know there's going to be some cool builds. I'm really excited to go over it. So uh, let's let's get started with the initial buys and with the team comps here from Blue and Red Team, Blue Team, with the Shivana in the top lane. Pretty strong pick, especially as it gets to late game. No flash taken, te teleport, ignite to try and get that lane pressure, try and scale into the late game profitably. Not a lot of CC is the trade-off, and you know, it looks like Blue Team is a little low CC. Their real main source of targeted CC is going to be that Udyr with the stun. They've also got the Blitzcrank hook, they've got the knockup from the Blitzcrank, but Kai'Sa... No CC to speak of. Zed, no CC to speak of. Shivana, not really any CC either. Just that Dragon Form Ultimate. Uh, so so we'll see if that winds up hurting a blue team at all. Having pretty much no crowd control. But definitely some really strong possibilities if they get into the late game as well. We would expect to see Kaisa Blitzcrank really bully the Sivir Leona lane on the red team. Sivir often needs a lot of time to get going. Although Leona, with a, some good lane pressure can help counteract that. Vayne top, you know, we don't see it that often. The fleet footwork from the Vayne rather than something like the press the attack looks like she may try and make it a farm lane, really try and kite against the Shivana. Uh, Lee Sin in the jungle means that red team may be looking to make some plays early game, but then the Orianna in the mid lane, and as we can see from the starting items, has actually started that tier of the goddess. Going with the scaling early game item, no AP, no health, no combat stats coming from that tier. We'll see if Jirisato on Zed is going to be able to bully around the Orianna with that item rather than something more defensive, more combat oriented like a Doran's Ring or Corrupting Potion. Vayne similarly starting a Cull, so really looks like it's going to be focused with Cull with Fleet Footwork. It looks like Yan Yuan is just going to try and scale it up. Let's see how well that works with the game plan of the Lee Sin. Lee Sin may just try and get this Vayne, this late game Orianna, this Sivert. Get them to the, some power spikes early with his strong early game pressure. Whereas, you know, Jakey Poo on Giovanna, we think, we, we, I, we'd think that maybe we'll be able to just scale up a little bit more safely. Not be bullied as much by the Vayne since she has the fleet footwork and the call. We expect Zed to hold lane pressure. We expect this Kaisa Blitzcrank to hold lane pressure and the Udyr. Hopefully, we'll just sort of be the icing on the cake for that. So, let's get into it. See if we have any exciting level 1 plays. Udyr, Nathaniel, a little bit late. Uh, don't know if that's going to make a difference. We do see red team at 5 members strong looking for a potential cheeky invade. Blue team, no vision just yet. Jakey Puan Giovanna is the closest one to red team, and there is no vision. So, could be some early action. Let's see what happens. Like there's, like there's nothing, nothing planned, but you never know. Perfect, and red team actually just going to back it right up. You know, no invade coming. We thought, I mean, blue team is really the team that, that would be going for the invade, if any. They've got the Blitzcrank, especially in mid-lower elos, you see a Blitzcrank just walk right up to, to here or so, try and hook a buff, try and hook one of the members of the enemy team early on, just try and land that grip, either secure the buff, secure a kill, or even just set the enemy jungler behind, since it doesn't really cost much. Anyway, both junglers starting on their bottom side. Mid laners, top laners, getting ready to go. Jakey Poo dragging the wave on Giovanna, definitely something that you can do sometimes. Try and make the wave push towards you, rather than get it pushing away. You really do want to be able to secure that early farm. Hopefully we'll see some exciting action. I mean, I'm sure there there are early game pressure options for both teams. As we mentioned, the Blitzcrank is, should be very good against the Sivir unless those spell shields are absolutely on point. The Orianna, as we mentioned, starting tier of the Goddess means the Zed may be able to get some early pressure. Right now, pretty much just farming going on. The Fleet Footwork from the Vein allowing her to weave in some auto attacks, get some good kiting going on. Oh, but here comes the Zenith Blade. Red Team bot lane is hit level 2 first. Zenith Blade coming out. Stun coming out. Blitzcrank has to run away very fast. And now Kai'Sa is caught out. Hook missed from Blitzcrank. Kai'Sa has hit level 2. But heal 
forced immediately, actually out of both AD carries. Ignite used as well from Silly Boy. I don't know about that heal from Chai Latte. Looks like on Sivir just wanted to, yeah, I don't know, just give get them the move speed. Now in the top lane, Yan Yuan, no press the attack, no problem. Still able to proc the Silver Bolts, flashes forward, tumbles forward. The Ignite ticking from Jakey Poo now, trading it back as Yan Yuan took one too many tower shots, but walks away. No problem. Here comes Lee Sin, Eggplant Main just missing that Sonic Wave. Not quite able to get anything done. Jakey Poo going to be forced to back. Does still have Teleport. That's the advantage of the Teleport Ignite if you don't think you need the Flash early. Action-packed first few minutes already. We're going to see, we may see a little jungler scuffle here around the Scuttle as well. It is worth noting, Red Team already up about 3,000 gold. The biggest difference there is actually in the mid lane, 10 CS lead for the Orianna. Despite starting that tier of the Goddess, still able to bully around the Zed. Here in the bot lane, oh, they still haven't backed, they still haven't reset, and wow, Blitzcrank getting taken so, so low by that Boomerang Blade. Finally going to be forced out. Now a gank coming in from the Udir, but just forces the barrier, forces the flash from the Orianna. Should be enough. Give mid the lane prio. Udir actually did secure the top side Scuttle Crab. Now he's going to head towards the bottom one as well. Red team's bottom lane starting to roam up. They're going to run into a Zed as well. Leona with the engage, with the Zenith Blade. Now Zed going in, but now there are four members of Red Team Strong. Vayne has joined the party here as well. With the teleport, they're going to get one kill. Looks like they're going to get a second. First blood to Red Team. Two kills going over to them. 1,000 gold lead right off the bat. The only advantage of that for Blue Team, if there is one, pretty much means that there's that Shivana. 29 CS to Vayne's 13 now. Jakey Poo going to be able to get a lot of gold. A lot of free farm. Vayne is going to be missing XP. Perhaps that means Shivana will be able to hit level 6 first as well. And that could be big in the top lane for these upcoming fights. But overall, well played from the red team. Worth investing the Vayne teleport. Securing two kills, including one for the Vayne. Jakey Poo may be greeting a little bit for some tower damage. Will not be punished at all. Yan Yuan still happy to sit back. Picked up boots from his last back, but has not recalled since that play on the bottom side, a great teleport, secures two kills, and a 1,000 gold lead for the red team to start things off. And now as, as people reset, start putting in their first purchases, Kerbex on the Orianna, able to get the Seeker's Arm Guard from the first back. That should really help in lane. She was already doing a good job at bullying Girisato on Zed. Now the Seeker's Arm Guard should mean that she's taking even less harass. These trades in the top lane, Yan Yuan running out of mana, getting hit by that double strike from Jakey Poo. You know, the Vayne able to take some damage there, not winning those trades as hard as we might think, even though the Shivana is not yet level 6, does not have an engage tool. Other initial purchases coming out. Nothing crazy about what you'd expect. The Iron Spike Whip was completed already from the Lee Sin. Now here comes Udir, hits the bear stance. That's going to bring it to the hook, but great spell shield from Sivir to dodge the grip. Bear Stance coming out on the Leona too as she engages with Zenith Blade. Going to be forced to flash away as she's stunned up and takes a lot of burst. The gank from Nathaniel forces the Leona flash, but Blitzcrank just waited a half second too long to throw out that hook, allowing Sivir to spell shield before... Allowing Sivir to spell shield rather than going for the hook while she was still stunned from the Bear Stance. Now, Zed though is level 6. Orianna's still level 5, Barrier not quite up for Kerbex. Looks like Jakey Boo could get dope, but no, he's going to drag and pour forward onto Yan Yuan and just absolutely deletes him with the massive fireball from the Dragon Breath coming out. Nothing for Lee Sin to do there, but walk away. He did try to make the engage. Now here comes the Death Mark from the Zed. Missing the Shurikens means that Kerbex is going to be able to just walk away, does not have to use the Barrier as it comes off cooldown. Putting the pressure in the mid lane, in the bot lane, is going to allow Nathaniel on Udir to secure the first dragon. The Mountain Drag helps with the resistances, especially for that Shivana, gaining the extra armor and magic resist from taking down the dragons, and then additionally gaining some extra armor and magic resist from the effects of the Mountain Drag. So as Blue Team continues to fight back, continues to regain pressure, gets a kill back, they are now down just 500 gold. They did also pick up that dragon, resonating... Uh, Sonic Wave landing onto Jirasato. No resonating strike coming out from Lisa. Not too surprising. Plated Steel Caps finished for the Shivana in the top lane against the Berserker's Greaves from the Vayne. The Steel Caps should help Jakey Poo 
continue to win out on these trades, block out a significant portion of the damage from the vein. Noon Quiver completed for Sivir versus the Serrated Dirk on Kai'Sa. We do see Serrated Dirk coming through fairly often for Kai'Sa early, just to build towards that collector later and for the lane pressure it gives. Serrated Dirk plus Ionian Boots completed for Zed in the mid lane, rushing those boots, try and make get the rotations off faster, be able to kite around Orianna a little bit more effectively. But in the mid lane, things still look pretty even. The CS is actually fairly back to even, has swung back over to Zed. Now the biggest CS difference in the top lane for Shivana, 22 CS up, and in the bot lane, Sivir up about 15 on the Kai'Sa. Throws out the hook there, does. Let's crank, but misses, but the Zenith Blade is going to connect. Sonic Wave comes in, Dragon's Rage, the Lee Sin ult comes out. Does not take the Resonating Strike, could have secured the kill a little bit earlier. Instead, Silly Boy forced to take it. Uh, looked like Eggplant Main could have just taken it right away if he had connected the Resonating Strike. Instead, chose to leave it, try and donate it over to Chai Latte. And instead, Leona picks up that kill. Still a very nice play there. The missed grip from Blitzcrank left him essentially defenseless, flashed away, but it just did not matter, especially once the Zenith Blade connected. That's going to allow Chai Latte to continue pressing the advantage, now at 25 CS, and potentially able to continue zoning Kai'Sa off. Sivir is now level 6. Explosion Knight stuck at level 5, but now stepping up as here comes Blitzcrank having respawned already. Trade's kind of going on. Throughout the map with Leona roaming mid, Sivir just going to disengage, completely run away. Looks like Zed may be collapsed on by a few members, getting hit with the Zenith Blade, throwing out the Shadow, but using the Deathmark right away. Then jumping right back to the Shadow, nice play there, dodging the Shockwave. Very clean to avoid the three-man collapse on him, allowing Udyr to continue just clearing vision, farming it up, and now it looks like blue team's going for a counter roam. Silly boy, still quite low, getting hit by the grip from the Blitzcrank. The Ignite comes out too. Zed coming over to secure that kill with no problem. Now Kerbex completely out of mana, pops the barrier, but here comes the Udir doing so much damage right now, using the turtle stance. Interesting that he actually took the turtle stance. He did not put a point in Tiger, as we see many Udirs do, especially in competitive play. Instead, went for that turtle build. Uh, may maybe building, clearing the jungle a little bit slower, but definitely giving him some more survivability in these fights, and this is a very skirmish heavy game. Red team continuing to hold a very small advantage, but ha sending so many people mid, getting really nothing off of it, in fact getting a kill traded back on them, is bringing blue team back into the game, and they are actually going to pull ahead here, as they are doing a lot of damage to this tower. They're popping the Rift Arrow. Leona takes the Zenith Blade in, forcing Udyr to take tower, but he's Going to be able to just get away. The Rift Herald charge does not quite kill the tower. Solar Flare comes out from Leona. Blue team able to limp away. Finishing off all the plates on the mid lane tower there. Now about 500 gold. Here comes the Lee Sin. Clean play with the Sonic Wave. He does not take the Resonating Strike to just kill the Kai'Sa. That allows her to just void rush out. Chai Latte does get the kill. But it's traded back immediately onto Eggplant Main. Not a really clean play. And now here is the Shavana teleporting into the black back line in dragon form. With that fireball, kills the Leona right away. Chai Latte gets hit by every shuriken from Jirisato, trading a kill back from certain death after using the death mark. Blue team continuing to come out ahead, and Kerbex, the command shockwave again, not quite missing one more Dragon's Breath from Jakey Poo, doing so much damage, blowing him up. No AP built on the Shivana, going directly, it looks like, for the Blade of the Ruined King rush. Doesn't matter. Those fireballs, especially in Dragon Farm, just do so much damage. Blue team also secures the turret on the back end of that. That is first tower. They win the fight. They are now at 2,000 full gold. Disaster for red team. And I really think a lot of that stems from Eggplant Main just not being able to finish off the kills with the resonating strike. Throwing the Sonic Wave, not being willing to go in, and that's just allowing blue team squishy members to survive a little bit longer. Put out a little more damage, get a little more survivability. And then there, that, that's just enough to swing these fights, it looks like. I'd like to see a bit, a bit more proactivity on these skill shots, on these abilities from Eggplant Main. Here, Chai Latte has the ward over the wall, getting a lot of damage onto Explosion Knight. Kai'Sa able to run away, but now tagged by the Solar Flare, tagged by the Zenith Blade. Stunned up as well, Eggplant Main not playing around this time, safeguarding directly to Leona and wrapping up that kill, utilizing the Iron Spike Whip nicely. Some mythic items are already being finished up. Duskblade of Drakthar finished for the Zed. He is tagged by Zenith Blade here, and we'll talk about this later as 
red team just collapsing very nicely. Five members strong will finish off the dragon, will grab a kill as well. Vayne chasing the Zed down in the final hour, flashing forward. Zed running away, getting the death mark, and now this is a lot of damage onto Vayne. The Ignite comes out, and she may die to that. She will to one last Shuriken, cleanly played again from Jirasato on Zed. He still walks away. Red team picking up a couple kills, picking up the dragon. That's an ocean drag. Allowing Sivir to continue farm, but in the top lane, Jakeypoo on Giovanna continues his march down the tower. 105 CS, 3 kills. Blade of the Ruin King plus Plated Steel Caps already completed there. In the jungle, Nathaniel has finished off that Sunfire Aegis. I would assume that Eggplant main on Lee Sin will be able to finish the Gore Drinker shortly, probably on his next recall. Duskblade completed for Zed. Oriana looks like she's actually going to finish off the... Danya's Hourglass, as she has picked up a stopwatch in addition to the Seeker's Arm Guard. Immortal Shield Bow completed here for Chai Latte. Mobility Boots uh, prioritized on Silly Boy. We do see Leonis do that reasonably often as Jakey Poo takes down a red team tower. Blue team, the, the gold came back to pretty even, but now blue team back up about 2,000 as they're picking up. Objectives on the back end. Here comes Udir hitting the Chilling Smite, hitting the Phoenix Dance. Nice Solar Flare coming out from Leona, but it's not enough. It is too little, too late. Bane is dead. Explosion Knight picks up the kill on Silly Boy as well. Two kill, quick kills for Blue Team. And now, here comes Zed. Jirasato dodging the Command Shockwave once again, timing those shurikens perfectly for the kill. Blue Team taking down a Tier 2 tower, getting the kill in the 1v1. Stopwatch used by Kerbex. But it was just not enough. Shuriken's time perfectly. Jirasato is continuing to impress with his usage of the shadows, of the shurikens, of the slashes, and of the death mark. Excellent play coming in here from the Zed as Blue Team now realizes they may be a little bit too deep. Pushed up to the inhibitor at 14 minutes with death timer so short. They are going to disengage, run away. The Rift Herald coming up soon. Would not be surprised to see them go for that. They have extended this gold lead. They're up 4,000 gold. They're up three towers to none. This set is unstoppable. Kerbex has finished off the Zanyas. That's going to delay the Mythic Power Spike pretty significantly. While Jirasato is just going to continue, we would assume, running rampant. As we saw, the stopwatch just did not mean that much for Kerbex. Now here comes Anyuan getting the Condemn onto Jakey Poo in the wall. He does have Dragon Form. You may be thinking about turning back on this. He does have the completed Blade of the Ruin King. Yan Yuan has not finished the mythic item yet. Jiggy Poo able to just ultimate over the wall, throw the Dragon Breath back, able to disengage. Now it looks like Blitzcrank is going to go for something over the wall. The Living Shadow thrown out by Jirasato, able to get a little bit of poke. Pop the Bone Plating on the Leona, but not really looking for anything crazy from the kills. Just looking to set up this Rift Herald and secure that objective. Power plates are down, of course, should be able to use it maybe in the bot lane to finish off the tier 1, get a hit on tier 2, or in the mid lane, secure the tier 2, or maybe even go for a cheeky play in the top lane, try and just secure the early inhibitor tower. That could be a nice gold swing for the red team. Already up about 4,000 gold, one dragon to one, they're up 10 kills to 8. <clears throat> Jakey Poo now, by the way, completing that second item, Rift Maker. Vayne still does not have the mythic item completed. Pretty clear that they had their great flash by Nathaniel, dodging out of the Solar Flare. Sunfire Aegis for him. You know, we do see in solo queue pretty often Sunfire Aegis plus Lich Bane build from Udyrs. Would not be surprised to see that come out. Locket complete for Romantic on Blitzcrank. Gale Force now completed on by on Kaisa by Explosion Knight. Silly Boy still working on the Mythic. Kraken Slayer completed for Vayne, but here is a catch. Zenith Blade coming out onto Romantic. Forced to flash away immediately, goes for the hook. But that ranged minion is playing Get Down, Mr. President, with Lee Sin. No chance to hit the hook there. Red Team going to continue pushing in here. Nice dodge of the Zenith Blade. There's Romantic just kiting back and forth. Zed potentially able to clear this wave. Now Red Team looking like they kind of want to collapse on the Shyvana. Can't blame them. 550 gold bounty means that Shyvana is a juicy target. But with two items complete, we know Shyvana is going to do a lot of damage. This is an often theory crafted Shyvana build for solo queue. TP Ignite. Press the attack. 
You can proc it very quickly with your double bite. Blade of the Ruin King gives you a lot of burst, a lot of early survivability. And then Riftmaker with the new changes gives a lot more HP. Scaling Omni Vamp rather than the flat Omni Vamp, very helpful. We do see Kraken Slayer now completed on Yan Yuan. So potentially, you know, may, may be able to duel Shivana as we get later into the game as Vayne continues to scale. But, you know, blue team definitely in a commanding lead here. Sunfire plus Sheen now for the Udyr. But here's a hook. Here's a fight right away. Nice grip there for Silly Boy to use the flash immediately. Walked over a ward. Immediately got hooked and forced to burn the flash. Now Jakey Poo back up in the top lane with Yan Yuan. That Kraken Slayer burst with the Silver Bolts is pretty nice. Ignite is up though for Jakey Poo. I, I don't even know if Yan Yuan wins this all in. We'll just back off. We'll plan on recalling so much damage here from Grisado on Zed. That is a lot of damage, a lot of burst coming out from the death mark. The hook comes in to add insult to injury on the end of that play, of course. But Silly Boy just caught out trying to secure vision, but with no towers other than the mid lane tier 2 standing outside of your base on the top side. You, know, you don't control your jungle anymore, Red Team. Trying to get these wards maybe is a little foolish as the Sonic Wave comes out. Resonating Strike as well. Very clean Insect, but an excellent Dragon Form from Jakey Poo to dodge the Command Shockwave. Kerbex just has not been able to get anything from the Shockwave. And look at the burst from the Flame Breath. So much damage onto Kerbex. Yen Yuan now running fast, but he doesn't want this. What a Flame Breath. What a Fireball. Death Mark is back up. Uses it right away onto Kerbex. Not able to hit the other skill shots, but finishes him off in the end as that last fireball comes out to do even more damage. Udyr now in the back line, melting through Lee Sin as well. It is a four for zero in favor of blue team. They are going to take down this tower. They are popping the Rift Herald. They have the inhibitor on in their sights. They are up over 6,000 gold. And they are just going to look to push for the 20 minute inhibitor. It looks like Five members strong. Jakey Poo working back towards that ult on Shivana. Has to auto attack to get that back. There goes the inhibitor. They may try and even get this to hit onto the Nexus Tower, but then now, no, they realize they pushed up a little too far. Nathaniel taking a lot of burst, backing off immediately. But what a fight from Blue Team. Another useless shockwave from Kerbex. Used it just as Shivana used the Dragon Form to get right out of there. And a, a valiant effort, but. Eggplant main, I don't think the tanky Shivana is the person you want to be trying to insect. It's just not going to work out great. But this may work. There's a Sonic Wave right away. There's the Shock Wave we've been looking for. Great play getting two members of Blue Team. Blue Team wants to do the Baron Nasher, but Red Team has spotted them or knows where they are. Booking it straight there. Blue Team forced to back off. And just a great shockwave, great Lee Sin engage. Excellent play there from Red Team to secure those two kills. And now they are looking to turn onto the Baron Nasher themselves. They say, thank you very much, Blue Team. We appreciate the two free kills. Nice job getting the inhibitor, but now your super minions are going to have to contend with our Baron Dup minions. And the Zenith Blade coming out onto Jakey Pushavana was looking for that steal over the wall, but is just going to be CC'd up by Leona and forced to run away. Still has a massive bounty, 550 gold and a nice condemn for the stun there by the vein, but forced to disengage as Kaisa is here. The rest of blue team is running as well. Red team looking for the engage again onto the front line, onto the relatively tanky Trivana. May not be the best idea when there are still other priority targets to be had. However, still a very nice outcome there for red team. Here comes the death mark though from Girasato. I don't have time to discuss this, just a ton of burst from Girasato into a perfect Void Seeker from Kai'Sa. Great spell shield again. We've seen Chai Latte continually have very nice spell shields on these hooks. Looking good there. Anyway, overall, very nice fight. Very nice turn of events for Red Team. And no, still don't have time. Here comes the Sivir Ultimate, the red buff from the vein with the Night Hunter passive, able to just burst down the Kai'Sa, able to just burst down the Blitzcrank, another two for zero. Red team picking up kills here. I guess it's technically a two for one if you want to count the Lee Sin, but red team is taking matters into their own hands. They got two picks. They got the Baron. Yes, they lost Lee Sin, but they then just found two more picks. They have the Leona. They have the Shockwave. They have the Lee Sin. They have an excellent comp for getting these picks. 
and it has worked quite well, but here comes the Chilling Smite. Another nice shockwave from Oriana, though, as Shivana and Udi are going for this fight. Stopwatch used, but Nathaniel is taken down immediately. Jakey Poo still able to get one back, firing off that last fireball with his dying breath. Does pick up one kill, but is another two for one in favor of Red Team. And, you know, and, and we flamed Kerbex earlier. We said, hey, your early shockwaves were not great, were outplayed, or frankly, just didn't connect. But now these recent shockwaves have actually looked very impressive, have been consistently hitting two members, setting up multiple picks. So really nothing to complain about there. Red team pulling back this gold deficit, now down just 3,000 gold here 23 minutes into this game. Kill score 17 for the blue team, 14 for the red team. Red team has a lot of standing gold on the map to get too. Two outer turrets still standing on relatively low health. That will be a nice burst of income. And down so many towers, yes, it's an advantage for blue team, but it does mean that that gold is there, ready to be taken by red team. Other item purchases that we're seeing coming out. Essence Reaver completed now for Sivir. Locket uh, completed for Silly Boy to uh, fight against that Blitzcrank. Still no mythic item completed from Kerbex on Orianna. Just have the has the lost chapter in the amplifying tome. Blade of the Ruined King coming out for Vayne now. Black Cleaver coming out for Lee Sin. Udyr has completed that Sunfire Cape plus Lich Bane combination. The Zed has the Yamu's Ghost Blade to back up the Dust Blade of Drakthar, working towards what looks like a Ravenous Hydra as well. Collector completed for Kaisa, and that Shivana in the top lane now sitting pretty on three items. Blade of the Ruined King, Riftmaker, and has added a completed Zanya's Hourglass, so hopefully able to play around these fights very nicely. Rage Knife now, also coming in for Yan Yuan, so it looks like that Vayne is going to be working towards the Ginsu's Rage Blade to back up the two existing items. Here goes Zed, though, going in with the Death Mark, forced to get away, and now he may have baited his own teammate Nathaniel in, kicked back, hit with the Sonic Wave, and just obliterated Solar Flare does miss. Here comes the hook, but I don't think Lee Sin is the one you want to hit. Red Team continuing to stay grouped to make big plays. They get the kill onto Romantic Heydu. Now Jakey Poo going in the Shockwave. Oh, back to your old ways, Kerbex. You gotta hit those Shockwaves. Now Lee Sin, though, going back in his Eggplant main. These fireballs from Jakey Poo continue to hurt in dragon form. I don't know if he wants to be standing there. 1v5 as the Zenith Blade comes in. Jakey Poo uses the Zanyas, though, able to back away. The Boomerang Blade coming out. Spell Shield popped right there by the Shuriken. Red Team may be overextended a little bit, but they are able to walk away alive. Still a good fight for Red Team. They are now almost back to even in gold, only a thousand gold down. 25 minutes into the game means very little. It is two dragons to two with the Cloud Soul uh, coming up, but it's not going to be for a while. Looks like Dragon Soul may not be important in that game. Damn, that shiv is pretty good, says JakeyPoo96. Well, you know. 516, nothing to sneeze at. Three completed items plus the Giant's Belt. Can't complain too much. Those fireballs are hurting so bad. So, yeah. That shiv, doing pretty well. Ravenous Hydra completed on Zed. Here comes Eggplant Main looking for another pick. He has played pretty cleanly recently. I will say, Kurt Bex, you gotta hit these shockwaves. That may be what decides a fight is how good the shockwave is, how good the solar flare is, how good the dragon's rage is, who red team can engage on, and if blue team can survive these fights, can kite it out, can hit a big hook, and if they can, secure the fight. Silly Boy tossing out the Zenith Blade looks like in the general direction of Nathaniel, but not really able to pick up anything there. Sonic Wave plus Hook both come out. Neither going to be particularly impactful. Another Sonic Wave coming out here. Eggplant Man is going to choose to go in. He's going to get the safeguard as well, but he's going to kind of kick Nathaniel sideways. That's not what he wants. And Eggplant Man is going to be obliterated. Watch for this Oriana. Let's watch for the Shockwave. It's going to hit one. It only hits Nathaniel. They will be able to take him down by Jakey Poo. So big in the front line on Shivana is taken down, but so will the Vayne go down. It is a bloodbath, a three for three. Double kill for Jakey Poo on Shivana. Triple kill for Chai Latte on Sivir. Red team coming out ahead, and here comes a boomerang blade picking off the Kaisa. 
took a wild guess as to where she was. Guessed it absolutely right. Absolutely nailed Kaisa. Sivert with three items and still has not recalled after getting four kills. Has a Mortal Shield Bow, Essence Reaver, plus Infinity Edge, but may be in trouble here. Pushing forward to take down the outer turret. Here comes Junsato. Dodging the auto attack with the death mark, getting so much damage. Will be taken down still by Chai Latte in a one for one. But that is a thousand gold shot down for the Zed. That is the red team's most impactful member with nine kills, 11 assists, 20 out of 21 kill participation. Wow, that Sivir putting red team on his back. And now it looks like blue team may just be able to take down this third dragon of the game. Chilling Smite coming out from Udyr. Though Nathaniel says, why would I need a dragon when I can go get kills? Zenith Blade coming out onto Blitzcrank. It is a very split fight. Kaisa is not there yet, but Nathaniel able to get so much damage onto Kerbex right off the bat. Kerbex does not want to use the Command Shockwave right away. Blue Team picks it up. Jakey Poo tossing the human form fireball over the wall. Very split fight. Oriana is dead, but so is Jakey Poo. It is a one for one so far, but Blue Team is stronger here. Nice flash away by Yan Yuan. Says, sorry, silly boy. Sorry, Leona. I'm leaving you out to die. Fair enough. Vayne gets away. Blue team coming out on top. Picking up a two for one plus the dragon. Their strongest member did die, but being on soul point could be important. They have reestablished a slight gold lead, about 2,000 up one kill. This is an absolute bloodbath. 45 kills in 29 minutes. Could be anyone's game. Again, it's all about these fights. It's all about can red team hit a wombo, get a pick with the dragon's rage off a clean insect by eggplant maid, get a big shockwave from Kerbex. So far, the answer's been maybe. It's happened in some fights, and in those fights, red team tends to clean it up. On blue team, the answer is can they get a big hook? Can Girasato on Zed just get a nice pick with the death mark before red team's able to get there? Or can they survive the initial engage from the red team, the big wombo, get that Kaisa damage pouring out? Allow Jakey Poo on Giovanna to wreak havoc on the backline with the fireballs. These fights have been so close and so tight, and that is what is deciding this. Blue team able to secure the scuttle crab around Baron. Yan Yuan pushing bot with no teleport. The impetus is on blue team to do something as Yan Yuan is able to just push uncontested, and Jakey Poo says, White and nerdy, I gotcha. I'm going in. I'm using the dragon form. I'm forcing this engage. Silly boy is caught out, but blue team not able to win the engage as hard as they like. A huge shockwave hits four, and it's not enough. Blue team still picking up a three for one in the 5v4. That was just a perfect fight from red team practically, aside from missing the vein. What a shockwave hitting four members from Kerbex. And still, it's just not enough as blue team just does too much damage. It's just slightly too tanky to survive, to, to die to the shockwave. Yan Yuan was not there. Now he's going for this fight on Nathaniel. Condemns him backwards, but is taking an extra tower shot. Is now low, not able to convincingly win the 1v1 as Nathaniel runs away. We know that this Shyvana can melt the Baron Nasher. So this is just going to be a fight here with Udyr holding the inhibitor. The Baron is going to go down, and then Vayne may find himself in trouble. Boomerang Blade coming out just a little bit too late. Yan Yuan, though, getting the Blade of the Ruined King, going in, trying to do enough damage, still not able to finish him off. And Explosion Knight is going to pick up the kill. Vayne is going to go down. What a disaster for the red team. They don't get an inhibitor. They lose out on kills. They lose the big fight. They lose the Baron. A big gold lead for blue team now, plus the Baron buff. Wow, that just could not have gone worse. They didn't really get anything. Big engage from Jakey Poo, trying to go in, make something happen as if he could read my mind. And that allowed Blue Team to just, you know, be proactive, get so much damage down that even when the shockwave came out, it was just not enough in the 4v5. Yan Yuan probably frantically flaming his team, saying, I can't believe you guys went in there. Don't you know it's a 4v5? Just stall and let me get an inhib. That's not how it worked out. Didn't even get the inhibitor tower. The blue team pretty happy. Blitzcrank 
Almost caught out by the Zenith Blade, but I don't know if that's the guy you want to be going on. Blue team is getting so beefy. Taking a look at items. Thornmail, fully completed on Nathaniel. Demonic Embrace, the fourth item for Jakey Poo, also has that Oblivion Orb for the Grievous Wounds. Still no Mythic item completed for Kerbex. Went for the Seraph's Embrace at, instead, and I really cannot say that that is the best choice. You really need that mythic item to get more damage in. Runon's Hurricane completed on Kaisa. Trying to get this done quick because it looks like we're going to have another fight soon. But no, looks like Red Team has decided they do not want this. Just using the Dragon's Rage very defensively. Kick the Udyr away. Try to disengage. But now, here goes Silly Boy. Big Shockwave, big Solar Flare. The Shockwave connects onto three. But still, Red Team not able to win the fight. They do get so much damage. Chai Latte is still alive, but not anymore. Goes down. Flash. The Hook. Still missing from the Blitzcrank, but Jakey Pushavana is still alive. Bane in the back line. Yan Yuan kiting around for so long and getting the kill onto Nathaniel. It is a two for two in the end, but blue team alive with Baron buff with those big siege minions able to secure the inhibitor anyway. So despite the even fight, blue team still comes out ahead and again, a, another excellent shockwave. A great engage from Red Team. Solar Flare connected onto two. Zenith Blade then going in from the Leona into the three-person shockwave. Just was not enough. Yan Yuan was able to kite around, prevent Blue Team from getting to him, but it just didn't matter. Blue Team is too strong right now. The Shavana on four full items working towards the Morella Namicon is so strong. The Zed on four full items compared to an Orianna that has two rushing the defensive item that Zanya's Hourglass when you're behind might feel good for you, but let me tell you, it does not feel good for your team. You do not have the damage to back it up. The Sivir, Chai Latte is sitting on four items plus a stopwatch. Definitely an opportunity for Sivir to carry one of these fights. Vayne now with four full items, including the Guardian Angel. Opportunity for her to carry fights, as we saw. Yan Yuan was able to salvage that fight, prevent Blue Team from ending Hook coming out, but not able to connect. And now Eggplant made a very clean Sonic Wave Resonating Strike, War Jump Dragon's Rage. Complete the pick onto Romantic Hideout, and now... Red Team is the one with a numbers advantage. They did not really need to invest a whole lot. They still have Solar Flare. Here comes the Vayne Ultimate as well onto the Kai'Sa. Big burst back from the Kai'Sa. Not enough for anybody to come out ahead. They still have the Shockwave as well. Potentially able to get a big CC chain onto Blue Team. Yes, it is a 5,000 gold lead, but it is so late in the game. 35 minutes in, those gold leads are going to matter less and less. But now Zed looking for a pick, trying to get some damage onto Chai Latte, and does. But now Yan Yuan looking for the countering gate. It's all going to come down to how well these carries play the fights. Can Zed pop someone? Can Jikipu on the Shivana do enough damage before the engage comes out? Not a great solar flare there. Zenith Blade also missing up with a flash stun into the one man shockwave. That may be enough. It is a pick onto the Zed here in the fight. Jakey Poo going in, doing so much damage. Kick away onto Nathaniel has to be very defensive. He is so tanky though, popping the stopwatch as well. Jakey Poo watching over the wall, throwing out the fireball, popping the Guardian Angel from Yan Yuan. But Nathaniel going down, Zenith Blade from Silly Boy. Kaisa kiting backwards. Jakey Poo still in dragon form. He has to use the Zanya's Hourglass pretty early. Has to run away. Has to look for a fireball. It's only human form, but it still gets the kill. But Red Team going to finish off the fight despite Chai Latte going down. Red Team limping away with two members at slivers of health. But they do win the fight. A 5-4-3. The Vayne played the fight well. And Red Team has realized that even though they have so many good team fight ultimates, so many ultimates that are really, really good if they hit four or five or even three people, you can just use those as an engage. Even if you miss the Solar Flare, even if you miss the Zenith Blade, guess what? Silly Boy can still just flash forward, use that shield, get the stun, get a one-man shockwave from Kerbex. That's still going to be enough with your whole team there to get a pick to start the fight. And that's what Red Team did there. Engaged with an immediate kill on Tajirisato. Was not able, e was not even able to use the death mark. And, you know, that just led to that fight being such a win from Red Team. Even though Jehipu, Nathaniel, stayed alive for so long. Explosion Knight was just not able to pump out enough damage. That fight felt like Shivana and Udyr versus the world. Because Zed was already dead. Just like in Pulp Fiction.
now 37 minutes into this game. Everybody starting to get towards full build. Chai Latte, after using the stopwatch, actually decided on the Lord Dominic's regards instead. But here comes a fight. Oh, maybe a little bit deep from the Lee Sin, getting the kick onto Zed, but not able to burst him immediately. Nice Zenith Blade into the two-man Shockwave, but it's on the two tanks. On the Shavana and the Blitzcrank, but Vayne now trying to clean this up. Jakey Poo has to run away. Zed has to run away. It is a one fight for Red Team. The Shockwave was enough. It delayed Red Team. It delayed Jakey Poo and Blitzcrank. Romantic Hideout just long enough to allow Red Team to finish off the Udyr. Now Shavana has to limp away. Blue Team has to limp away. Just kidding. Like I said, Blue Team has to go in. Jirasato gets a quick kill with the death mark on the vein. Now flashes forward, gets two more kills. That is a huge play from Jirasato on Zed. Romantic Hideout also doing a great job applying the CC, doing what he can as the late game Blitzcrank. It is what it is, but what a play from Zed. Just as I was saying that they had to back off, he just goes in and deletes three people. I mean, that was incredible. Firing off the death mark immediately, then flashing forward. He knew exactly how much damage he could do, and it was perfect. Now with the Shivana coming back, blue team should have the damage to burst down the Baron. They know that Sivir is bot farming. Silly boy on Leona should not be able to do anything about this Baron. Will not even try. No desperation solar flare. We'll just let blue team take it. That Baron buff could prove to be very impactful, especially with the Elder Dragon coming up. 38 minutes into this game. Full build is being reached. This gold difference is going to matter less and less. Still no mythic item from Orianna. Come on, man. You need to do damage. That's just so sad. No wonder these shockwaves aren't as good as they should be. Death mark forward by Zed. On to uh, Sivir Chilate using the heal to stay alive. Silly boy sacrifices his life trying to secure vision. Once again, when you are this far behind on support, you can't necessarily go up and get all that vision. Oh, and Chai Latte just died. I think we got to watch that one again. I totally missed that. Already low on the Sivir. Let's see what happened. Life stealed a lot. Jakey Poo stepping up on Giovanna, getting kicked away, getting chased. Chai Latte backing up and then just a flash dash forward from Kaisa. Explosion Knight picking up the kill. That's two members of Red Team dead. And here comes the death mark. It is back up already. What a shuriken usage. Yan Yuan is dead. Eggplant main is going to get jumped on by all five as the Void Rush comes out. He should go down too. Blue team coming up with four kills. It is Kerbex still. Oh, and he's got the Mythic now. It's going to be all right. I think Orianna can win this. They have, you know, with that Luden's Echo finally completed. Oh, just kidding. It's way too late. You are way too far behind. You're getting hooked. You're getting knocked up. Nice shockwave. Doesn't do anything. Doesn't even go off. Dying too fast. Blue team coming up with the victory. Winning those last big fights. And finishing off the game. Well played in those last fights. Incredible Zed play. Jirasato just absolutely popping off. Bringing blue team to the top. Jakey Poo. On Shivana, of course, doing so much damage. Those fireballs hurt so damn much. Explosion Knight on Kaisa, you know, did what he could. Did what he had to. Popped the Chai Latte in the last fight of the game. And that was enough. Chai Latte, despite his best efforts, could not carry the game. That is a win. Eggplant Man didn't eat his veggies. You're damn right. That's what you get. He made some good engages, but he also made some very questionable engages, trying to go in with no real backup, trying to go in on the tanks, trying to kick an Udyr back into your team. Don't always recommend that. Overall, very well played from the blue team. They finish off the game 40 minutes with a total kill score, 41-33. to 33. You can tell this is a pro-caliber game.